All right, so in this video, we're going to continue our mechanics of materials series and, and do an example problem on calculating the average normal stress of an axially loaded member. And, uh, um, and this, is, this is kind of a, a problem at the beginner level. If you haven't seen a problem uh, calculating normal stresses for an axially loaded member, this is probably a good place to start. So in this problem, what we're given is a, a, is a rod here where segment AB has been, been shaved down to 20 millimeters in diameter. And, uh, and, and segment BC here is 50 millimeters in diameter. Uh, it's fixed at the end C here. And we've got some uh, external loads that are applied to the outside of the structure or the, the member. It's five kilonewtons at point A pointing to the right and then 20 kilonewtons at point B pointing to the left. And these, this is, the, all these have round cross sections. So make, make sure you remember this is a diameter, not as opposed to a rectangular cross section or anything. Okay. And what we're going to do in this problem is draw the axial force diagram and calculate the average normal stress in segments A, B, and B, C. All right. So uh, like many problems that you're going to do in mechanics and materials, this uh, problem t entails calculating the, um, internal loading or internal loading being uh, force internal forces be shear and normal force and and internal moment uh, and then calculating the stress associated with each of those internal loads okay and so the first thing that we want to do is one is calculate internal loads and this is this is typical okay you're going to need to do this a lot okay calculating the internal loads first here so um the point, the places that are important to us here are, are places where we have a, a discontinuity. So a geometric shift would be a discontinuity and where we have a concentrated load. We want to look in between those locations. So here, this is a concentrated reaction, if you will, at point C. Uh, at point B, there's a concentrated load and a geometric discontinuity and then a, a concentrated load at A. So we're going to cut in between these concentrated loads and discontinuities. So I make a cut here. And I'm going to make a cut here to look at segments A, B, and B, C. Okay. And so here at segment A, B, if I want to look at segment A, B, segment A, B, uh, I have a choice. I can make a cut here and look at the look at the section all the way to the right from, from the cut all the way to point C. But that would entail that I would have had to calculate my reaction at C before I did any of the cutting. So in this case here, I'm going to cut here and look to the left. So you can look either to the left or to the right. You know, it doesn't matter as long as you... Uh, you know, take everything to the left or everything to the right. So here I'm going to look at to the left. So here is segment AB with a cut to the looking at the left. I have the five kilonewtons going this way. And uh, um, I have here, I don't have any moment or shear. Okay, so this moment here and a shear that would normally be present if I had the external loading to cause this moment and shear, if I had some transverse loading, something that caused bending, right? Um, I don't. And so when I apply, let's say, some of the moments about this line right here, because everything is through the center, this moment will be equal to zero. And if I sum forces in the vertical, this shear force will be equal to zero as well. Right? So all I have is a, a normal force. And that's really the definition of an axially loaded or single force member. Only this normal force right here, this N, is non-zero. Okay? And so here, to calculate this, I, I say sum of the forces equals zero to the right, positive right here. And I'll say N plus five kilonewtons equals zero. Ah, here, let me call this NAB, okay? So N of segment AB, the normal force in segment AB is five kilonewtons. That makes NAB equal to minus five kilonewtons, indicating that the arrow or the force should be going the other way and also indicating that we have compression in segment AB. Now, if I look at segment BC, I'm gonna make a cut again here. Here's this cut right there. And I look at the left side of that cut Okay, here's that cut right here. And then I have to draw in, I want to make sure I draw in all the external loads. Bam, bam, right here, 20 kilonewtons. Some people, sometimes people will tend to forget the external loads or they miss one. And that tends to skew everything from your, um, from your calculation results. And then here again, I'm going to not write the moment and shear because I know everything here is going to be single, cause a single force member here. So this is an NBC, and if I sum forces again in the horizontal equal to zero, with to the right being positive, I'll have NBC uh, minus 20 kilonewtons plus 5 kilonewtons equal to zero, and that tells me NBC is equal to positive 15 kilonewtons, indicating that the arrow, the direction of the arrow is correct and causing tension in segment BC. 
Okay, so there is my tension in segment BC. Uh, to draw my my axial force diagram, to draw my axial force diagram. So here two axial for internal. How about internal? You know, internal normal force diagram. This is going to be like an internal moment diagram, internal shear diagram, internal normal force diagram right here. And really, I know that because I don't have anything distributed, I have constants here at A and B right here. I know that my it, it, within it, no matter if I make a cut here, here, or here, doesn't matter where I cut, I know that uh, the internal normal force is going to be a constant negative 5 kilonewtons. And then no matter where I cut here in segment BC, I also know it's going to be a constant 15 kilonewtons. So that kind of gives me a clue that, hey, you know, I'm probably going to have a, uh, a, a straight line, a constant. So if I, if I were to draw this right here, so let me, let me draw lines that kind of match up here. I want to draw lines right here. This is going to be my normal force diagram. So I'll call this uh, N in units of kilonewtons right here. And here, this line right here, this dotted line will represent segment segment at point B right here. Okay. And so here in sec, this is this is zero or point A. This would be like an X axis along the length, although no lengths are given here. Okay. And uh, um, looking for my straight edge. So here I would have uh, uh, here. I ha I know that in segment A B I have negative five. So I'm gonna bam right here. This is a negative five kilonewtons. And then here in segment BC on internal force, I have a positive 15. So I know here, right here, this is plus 15 kilonewtons right there. And look at that. And, and notice the difference right here, just as you're going to learn later on in shear and moment diagrams, especially shear diagrams here, I have a concentrated axial force here going to the right that causes a dip down of five kilonewtons. I have here a concentrated external 20 kilonewtons, and look, this difference right here is 20 kilonewtons. And then you would anticipate that here, because I'm dropping back down, the reaction right here should be 15 kilonewtons. So here, getting back down to zero. So this is my internal axial force diagram. Okay, If I had a distributed axial load going across right here, okay, which maybe we'll deal with another time, Okay, is uh, uh, it would cause this to be linear. Okay, this this diagram to be linear. But here, look, that's all it is. This is the internal axial force diagram. Now, cal to calculate the stresses, this is a little bit easier. The stresses, so three, calculate nor average normal stresses. Okay, so here we're applying a, a constitutive relationship. Sigma at, sigma is equal to whoa. Sigma is equal to N divided by the cross-sectional area, okay? And so here for segment AB, segment AB, I've got a cross-sectional area, AAB, is pi over 4 times the diameter of AB squared, which would be pi over 4 times 20 millimeters squared, which is, uh, let's see if I punch into my calculator real quick, is I believe 314.16 millimeters squared, and then um, and to do let's also do segment BC at the same time. So segment BC, right here, the area ABC is equal to pi over 4 dBC, the diameter BC squared, which is pi over 4 times 50 millimeters squared, and this would be this is uh, 1,000. 963.50 millimeters squared right there. And then to calculate the stress in each, I have sigma AB, the normal stress right here. I have NAB divided by AAB, okay? And here I put in the negative 5 kilonewtons divided by the 314.16 millimeters squared. And this gives me uh, negative 0 0.0. 1592 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. And one thing you should know is that one kilonewton per millimeter squared is also 0 0.01592. One, uh, this is the equivalent. This right here, this unit is the same as gigapascals. So GPA. And if I want to put this, express this in megapascals, I got to multiply this by a thousand, and that would be negative 15.92 megapascals. Okay, and that would be uh, 
All right, so that's sigma AB, and the negative indicates that it's in compression. So, I, you know, I'm looking at a compressive stress in segment AB. And then here in sigma BC, right here also, NBC divided by ABC, okay? And this would be um, here. Let's see, I, I won't go through all the nitty-gritty here, but this was, this was going to come out to uh, 0.00764 GPA in tension, a positive indicating tension, or... 7.64 MPA. All right, so hopefully this, this example gave you a illustration of how to, to use uh, this, uh, this, you know, this first constitutive relationship of simple for normal stress, uh, N over A. Or sometimes you'll see in other books, it's P over A, but whatever, it's the same. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Enjoy.